I think luck's a huge part of success. Luck does not play a part at all. Don't you dare try to make me feel bad about what I have accomplished in life. I was voted most likely to succeed in high school in the year 2014. In 2003. In 1994. I always had my homework done on time. I worked harder than the other students around me. Editor-in-chief of the school newspaper. I was president of the National Honor Society. So I had to learn English at the same time of doing my studies. I took extra morning courses, take-home courses, and I wanted to finish within three years, which I did. I went to a public high school in Central Jersey. It was just kind of that typical suburban Americana high school kind of experience. Going to a private school, a lot of the kids were almost like what you would see in Gossip Girl, you know, super posh, and I was one of 15 to 20 black kids in the entire school. You know, my mom actually ended up working a second job just to send me there. When I first came to this country and I saw the high school, I knew I needed to get out of there. Every Friday, there was a fight the graduation rate was about 11%. I work as an event planner in New York City. I'm a TV host. I am the CEO of an electronic components company. I do believe I am the most successful person in my class. I don't talk to many people from my high school, but I would say, given my hand and given my age, I'm probably the most successful. When I purchased my home, I was 23. Being able to put that down payment not only made me feel proud, but I knew it made other people that look like me proud, and it set me up for, you know, the next few years. I think a lot of people think I'm the most successful because I'm probably the most well-known or the most famous. I personally don't feel that way because there's people I graduated with that are doctors or lawyers, they're like curing disease, they're fighting in the military, they're raising families, they're giving something to society, and I just talk on camera. I think luck's a huge part of success. There are so many things that come to you in life that are completely beyond your control. So here's an example. My first ever job that I got out of college, I was at a job fair and I was there all weekend and I got lots of auditions and interviews and no offers. The very last day, I went to the bathroom at the convention center before I went back to my hotel. And I bumped into a guy there who was wearing a shirt with a logo I didn't recognize. I struck up a conversation. Turns out he had a friend who wasn't there, but that was hiring for a job, put me in touch. I interviewed a week later and got my first job ever. But for me, that, that was luck in my mind, because what if I had drank one less bottle of water that day? I didn't have to go to the bathroom. What if I had decided, hey, I'm going to go back to the bathroom at my hotel room? Luck does not play a part. At all. Okay, as soon as you choose to get up that day, you are paving your path. You're choosing to do something instead of just not doing anything. And more things happen. But if you just choose to feel sorry for yourself and say, oh, you know what, the first three days I didn't get any job offers, I'm not going to go back. But you went back. I think that if you get up, you get out of bed every day, you have a chance of being successful. But I think race, gender, the situation you're born into plays a huge part into it. You could work just as hard as me and probably be more talented than I am, but maybe you just didn't get that one opportunity or you didn't get that one luck or you didn't get the chance to take that unpaid internship because you had to work all summer. You know, I think that it plays a huge part into it. Sometimes being a black woman, you don't want to come across as crazy black woman, right? Or even in the <laughs> yeah. office, like you have to make sure how you present yourself and how you speak, you know, and people are always looking at the way you carry yourself. And growing up, my parents always said, you know, the minute you enter the room, people are going to be staring at you the entire time, whether you see it or not, but they're going to be looking at you through a microscope. Being a woman and being a Spanish plays a lot in this world. I have to work double for them to be able to take me seriously. I've always been realistic. My reality was that I was in the Bronx. About 56% of the population back then of the women get pregnant very early. As I was going to high school, the first thing I saw was this girl. She had her child carrying everything and carrying all the stuff and putting it on the bus. I, at that moment, I said, I'm not going to be in the statistics. But I had to actually just do everything and anything to get out of there. It is not fair, but at least I accept the, uh, the challenge, let's say, that it's what you make. How hard do you work? How much do you want it? Uh, one person had said to me in front of everybody in my office, and she said to me, you think you're better than everybody else. I threw it back at her. 
I say, yes, I am better. I'm better because I make myself better. I'm proud that I came up from the Bronx. I'm proud that I was really poor. And I told, don't you dare try to make me feel bad about what I have accomplished in life. If any millionaire want to use my story, have at it. Maybe it will inspire all the people to say, you know what, opportunity is there. What are you going to do to get that opportunity? I do think that if you don't have success, it doesn't mean that you didn't want it. I think that maybe you just didn't have the right opportunities or the right information to get you to where you want it to be, or you didn't have that one cheerleader or that one person kind of cheering you along or supporting you so you could take you know, this opportunity to land you to here. What about the other minorities or even anyone of any race that you know wants to get that dream job working for the big company or the big bank but didn't have the chance to go to school, right? Or wants to be able to take this opportunity to go to this job fair after school but they have to take care of of, you know their kids or you know their siblings or whatnot so I do think everyone has a chance of being successful but it's other factors outside that limit you from being able to go where you want to go because it's definitely inspirational and motivational your story I totally agree but do you feel it's still typical I think it's a big problem in this country that you point at one successful example of something and say all the problems are fixed right. like look they could do it or if this is what happens when sometimes that's the exception that proves the rule and I think that's a little bit exploitative because there are a lot of problems that, you know, one person who's successful doesn't mean that they're all fixed. Yeah, um, even when I am that story, I would have an issue as well, too, with them using that as a blanket statement. The way that I was able to get it done also, too, by having a work mom, by my mom being able to work, by me not actually having to do a lot of the simple things. These people who were saying, oh, well, I did it when I was your age. I, you know, worked a job and was able to afford a house and a car and pay off college. Yeah, well, college only cost like $8,000 then, and it's costing $58,000 a year now. And I think for younger people and people from minorities and from marginalized groups that don't have the infrastructure to have either scholarships or have money, family money to pay for these things or to help out, that's something that I think a lot of people don't realize if they're not in that situation that that's the reality for a lot of people. You know, I don't think high school should have superlatives. I think it puts everybody in a bucket and, you know, kind of puts those labels on you. I don't see the point in them. It could be bad or it could be good. Getting told when you're 18 that you're most likely to succeed out of the hundreds of other kids your age, that's terrifying. And I started to think, what do I have to do to live up to that billing and live up to all these expectations people had of me? It is a pressure that you have to just always be there, be the best. Not on the other hand, it pushes you. I think school should put more of a focus on finding your passion and not necessarily finding a job that pays the bills. You know, you don't have to be a lawyer, or a doctor, or a banker to make good money. You know, as long as you can find something you're passionate about and you have the hard work, you could do any job. Do what makes you happy and everything else will fall into place.